Hi guys, let's have a, a bit of fun and we'll look at how to create Viking portrait art in Affinity Photo. Now what you'll learn in this Affinity Photo tutorial for iPad, and you can see I've done it on the iPad, is how to create a Viking warrior painting in Affinity Photo. How to create a sunset background in Affinity Photo. How to create a snowstorm in Affinity Photo and how to create a colour grade in Affinity Photo. And that's right at the end. So bear with me and we'll get there. Now what you'll need. To complete this program you'll need the following resources. Sunset Sky, Sunset Sky 2, Mountain, Viking Man and Snow Overlays. Now all these are available from my website on the Envato links and I'll provide those in the website. You can, all, you can always use your own images of course and just follow right along. Now the Envato links of course are um, associate links so if you subscribe to Envato I'll probably make like a dollar. <laughs> but just to let you know it is there and Envato is very good. Now Let's start by assembling a quick fiery sunset background. We'll be adding a strong blur to the whole environment, so don't worry about stretching images or doing any precise extractions. Now let's import our first sunset sky image into our canvas. Pinch it in slightly so you can see the entire image. I always like to do that on the iPad so I can see what I'm doing without the screen bobbing in and out. Next, add a second deep red sunset image placed over the first and set to screen. We're adding a red foggy mist effect. If there are any harsh edges you can remove them using a layer mask but it's likely unnecessary. At this stage you don't need to worry about too much refinement. Now, we can quickly extract some large snowy mountains from their backgrounds. From one of the other assets, add the image to the layer stack. I use the selection tools and a layer mask to extract mine and then did a touch of refining using refine and create layer. Now you can see there, I've clicked the refine tool and I've selected new layer. So when you click apply, it creates a new layer from just that extracted part. Just do enough refinement so the edges aren't too jagged and there are no visible edges of the sky. Again, there's no need to be really precise here. Now with the mountains cut out, then we can place our mountains peak towards the bottom of the canvas and use a soft round brush to blend the bottom of the mountains into the red mist. We can also change the mountain's layer to 81% opacity. Well, 80% or 81%. Depending on what mountain you're using, whether you've used the, the image that I recommended or one of your own, it depends on where you want that. Now, we're going to move all this again slightly in a moment, so you don't need to be really precise. Now for a little bit of a tricky part. We're going to put our mountain fragments behind the background scene. Amazing! So drag the first mountain cutout to the bottom layer. Now you can see I've got a background layer there with a lock, but I'll remove that. That's the original um, image I drew in. So move the cutout right to the bottom pixel. Resize it. Now you can see I've made it considerably smaller there and set its blend mode to screen. Select the background layer this time. Set the background layer blend mode to multiply. This gives your new mountain a smoky far away look. And you can see it looks like it's actually sitting in the background, which is very nice. That's just what you want. Place a copy of the mountains on the left side and you can even flip that horizontally if you like and treat it similarly. Now you can see maybe that I've got it quite enlarged there but stretched out so the mountain slopes tend to merge into each other which is what you want. 
So resize it to suit your own needs there, however you've got that laid out. Set the opacity to about 55% and the blend mode again to multiply. This image is a blend of the sunsets and mountains. You can experiment with altering the blend modes to change the mood of the image. Blend modes are really powerful and you can do a lot with them. But you can see how clean and clear that is and quite misty, which is just what we're looking for. With the mountain range done more or less, we can add some final lighting. So select the left side mountain, you go to select, smart selection brush and pick the snowy slope or the brightest portion of the left side mountain and in this case it is the snowy slope. This is what my selection looked like. With the snowy slope selected add an adjustment layer called brightness and contrast and bring up the levels. Only the selected part will be changed. Repeat for the mountain on the right. I've kept it fairly soft in keeping with the overall image so far, but it has brought up the snowy slopes slightly. They are, they are quite a bit more emphasised than they were. Not much in the distant one, but certainly in the foreground one on the left hand side. Now select all layers and apply a bilateral blur filter to the image. Use the before and after option to achieve the look you want. I've gone for a strong misty look. Now bilateral blur you can paint on as, as you need it and I've added a mist above that left hand mountain there. You can see it's, maybe you can see it's a bit mistier than it was and in a few other places. Bilateral blur, um, if your brush is too big and too heavy, can wipe out a lot of stuff. So be careful with that one but it does give a really good effect. Now the Viking. Now that the background's done, let's create our Viking portrait. Extract your Viking using your preferred method. I use the same as before. Select the Viking and cut him out using a layer of his own. So let's create and clip a brightness contrast adjustment layer into the Viking portrait setting the adjustment layer to 20% brightness. So I created brightness contrast adjustment on the layer that contains just the Viking and then clipped it into the Viking portrait. You know how to do that. Drag it halfway down into the Viking layer so it sits in the Viking layer and adjusted it to, <coughs> excuse me, adjusted it to 20% brightness. Clip this layer into the Viking so it affects only that layer and not all the layers below it. You just want the Viking a bit brighter. Now let's duplicate the Viking portrait layer and bring it below the original and set the layer mode to screen. Now create with, with effects an outer glow and a soft golden yellow and set that to the hex colors F2D799 color uh, and that's on the duplicated Viking layer. And you can see the outer glow is just coming out around the edge and it's that kind of golden yellowy color. We're making it so that parts of the yellow peek through from behind the fur and the rest of his body and the axe and well everywhere for that matter. Now we add some colour. To make the Viking portrait art stand out, we're going to introduce some vibrant reds, oranges and blues into the sky. First create a new layer and set it to multiply. Now using a soft round brush set to a flow of just 5%, paint blue on the blue parts of the sky, orange on the orange parts and red on the red parts. Now. If you're clever, when you go to colours, you can set those reds, oranges and blues in the swatches panel so that you can use them. Focus on the outer parts of the image, keeping the middle of the image bright because this will darken and deepen the sky so we want to avoid going too dark. However, if you feel it's a little too dark, you can always lower the layer's opacity. 
Now we're going to repeat that step one more time, only this time on a layer set to overlay. Use the same red, orange and blue colours, the advantage of having them in swatches, and the same soft round brush. That'll also give the image a Viking warrior painting effect. So it makes it look a little bit like a painting. There you go. Now let's bring some of those reds, blues and oranges into the subject himself. First, create and clip a new layer into the subject and set it to multiply at 70% opacity. Then we can paint in some shadows using the dark red colour, focusing the colour on the inner parts of the subject. Now, moving right along, let's move on to the blood. First, we're going to create a blood colour swatch set consisting of the five colours seen here. I'll refer to them, obviously, as black, dark red, medium red, light red and white from here on out. So, you know what black and white colours are. So, the medium red, light red and white, you can put in a swatch on the right hand side there, you see. Just name the swatch group blood. Easy to find again. Now select the layer with the Viking image and his axe and using a good blood spatter brush with a very small tip colour the axe edges and the Viking body and axe and armour. In other words, put some blood on there. He's been hard at work. Now this is really a personal choice so go carefully. You don't want the whole thing dripping in blood you just want the effect of blood on this fellow. Here I have the axe with blood over it and also across the Viking's head and armour. So let's create a super quick snowstorm effect now to finish off the Viking fantasy warrior vibe. And the best way to create quick snow is to use PNG overlays like these snowy overlays from Envato Elements. Directly above the background and below the lighting layers, let's place overlay 17 from the snow pack if you've got that. Setting the layer to overlay mode. Now if you're using your own snow overlays, you can see this one here, the first one, number 17, is rather sparse, large, vaguely blurry um, snowflakes. Now, above all the other layers, go right to the top, let's drop overlay number 8, keeping it set to normal and enlarging it slightly. You can see there, the quite, it's quite a, a different effect than the first one, which was number 17. I might add, if you're looking for them, that Affinity Photo um, comes with its own um, snow effects, which are, you'll find... Um, if you go into your registration area. Now let's drop overlay number one, enlarging it as well, and then setting its layer mode to overlay. So there's a bit more snow in there. This is really snowing. We can then duplicate overlay one, change its layer mode to soft light, and adjust its placement to add even more snow. So move it slightly. Don't keep it right on the same spot, it'll just overlay the other one. Move it slightly so you've got more snowflakes there. The trick is to avoid any patterns in the snow. You can also try flipping the overlay horizontally. That'll give you a good swirl of snow. Now select all snow levels, not 17 at the bottom but the top three you can see there. Go to Filter, Motion Blur and set the angle to 35 with a pixel radius of 20. This gives it a slightly blurry angle effect. You can experiment with that to suit what you like. Now, finish up the snow by adding a filter, Gaussian Blur, to the snow layer set to Overlay. Okay, the snow layer that's set to overlay is the one that you want the Gaussian blur on. Give it a radius of 16 or 17. 
We can then group the topmost snow layers and use a layer mask to remove most of the snow from the subject's face. You know how to do that, don't you? Add a layer mask to it and use the eraser to just rub the snow from his face so you can still see the Viking's face. And suppose you'd like the snow to be even heavier. In that case, you can always duplicate the group or add more individual snow overlays. Obviously, you can make that snow as thick or as thin as you like. Now, the final touch. Finally, we can finish up with a colour grade. Add the free LUT, L-U-T, lookup table from the download site. I've provided that on the download site along with this um, along with this Affinity Photo file. Reduce the opacity to about 76% and set the mode to screen. And you can see that's, that's considerably brightened the image. You can experiment with that. Um, there's a million LUTs out there and you can use them. <laughs> the risk is up to you. Some work and some don't. Congratulations, you're done. Here's how your Viking warrior should look around about now. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and can apply these techniques in your future tropical brand projects. Feel free to adjust the final design and make it your own. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the thumbs up to like it. If you also click on the bell, you'll be reminded when new videos appear.